Greetings, Grins and Ghouls. <laughs> Hi, kids. This is going to be my survivor run through for Dead by Daylight, a new game that's on Steam. It is September 18th, 2017. Today is the last day you can get it for half price for 10 bucks. They did not pay me to do that. Nobody paid me for this. I don't own any part of the game or anything like that. Just doing a run through on the survivor side to give you a better idea of how the game works. This is a 4 versus 1 PvP. Four people are the survivors, one person is the killer. Object for the survivors is to reactivate five generators that'll activate the gate to get out. The killer is, duh, supposed to kill these four. So we're gonna go into, you can do play as survivor, play as killer, play as friends. Uh, <coughs> the characters themselves do not have any particular benefit one over the other, it's just the look. Um, for this one we will use Mr. Nervous Flight Fairfield. You can change his face, you can change his shirt, you can change his pants, but I would highly recommend that you do not use too much on bright coloring because that will make you easier to spot. The main thing you want to know about this is blood wet. This is where you, okay, for the actions you do on the game, you earn blood points. Those blood points you're used in the blood web to get items and add-ons and that kind of thing to go into your loadout. Um, in the game there are crates that you can find. These crates will have one of four things in it. They will have a, either a medical kit flashlight, a repair kit, or a map. Medical kit, of course, can heal yourself or heal your fellow survivors. The repair kit repairs the generator faster. The flashlight bl temporarily blinds the killer if you shine it in his face. It doesn't blind it for very long, maybe a couple seconds. And the map, when you right click, if you have it in your possession, when you right click it reveals like where the generators are and other things depending on how high level. Yeah, that's another thing. These are high level, low level and high level items. The brown ones mean it's a one use item. Gold and green are better quality and purple is epic rare, that's the best. Uh, loadout. You can choose, an, before you start the game, you can choose an item that you have in your inventory. Like, you could choose a first aid kit, then go to the add-ons and add bandages for more times that you can heal, or faster heal. And an offering, most of the offerings are either bonuses, you make more blood points when you're playing for that particular game, <coughs> or it's a better chance to get a particular map. Uh, what else? Customize. Shrines, you won't have to worry about for a long time. These are things that a particular character can learn, like you see here, this one's a big park perk, that's a different character, kind of main, bought it, and bought it again. They cost 550, considering that you only get about 10 to 15 of these shards per game, it's going to take you a long time to get there. And they refresh these to different ones every week, once a week. Okay, let's get back into the game, we're going to join the lobby. And that'll put us in a group of four. When you're playing survivor mode, you will not see the killer until the game starts. You'll see the other players, you can see what they're carrying. Um, you can set yourself up to carry something. I don't like doing that because I don't know how noob the other players are. Um, if you play a game and you're able to find one of those, like a medical kit or repair kit or something like that, in the game and you're able to leave with it without getting killed, you can take that to the next game. If you're carrying one of these during a game and you get killed, you lose the item and you lose the add-ons. You do. Oh, there's another thing I need to show you. The perks. <coughs> the perks are things that you'll find on the blood web, and these you never lose. But they give you a little bit better chance at doing certain things. This one gives you better skill, uh, success zones, and repairing. 
I'll show you that when the game loads. There, when you're repairing a generator, which takes about a minute and a half, um, there are circles that pop up randomly. And there's a spinner that spins around, and there's a certain section highlighted. You have to hit the space bar when the arrow is in that highlight, otherwise the generator will blow up, you'll lose some of the repair XP on the repair bar, and the killer will be notified that you're over there. Okay, we got four players. DIC, I believe, is the name of the build. I'll try not to make this video too long. Just wanted to show you some gameplay mode in here. Um, you start out randomly along the map. What I hate about this game is that sometimes they put the uh, killer only about 15 or 20 yards away from you. When you know the killer is near you is when you hear a heartbeat. The faster that heartbeat, the closer the killer is to you. And the faster that heartbeat, the faster you need to run away or hide. There are lockers you can hide into. It won't be a guaranteed hide. I mean, all the killer has to do is look in that locker and find you, and he will automatically grab you and put you on a hook. Well, he, it's the killer's choice. He can either beat the crap out of you or you're down to having to crawl on your belly and move incredibly slowly, or he will put you on this hook that aliens will sacrifice you for. You have three chances to get off of that hook, but if you use those chances and it fails, it speeds up the sacrifice ritual. And you only get a 4% chance of being successful on that. So what I usually do is if I get hooked, I stay on that hook, don't do anything, and I wait for one of the survivors to come over to get me off of that hook. You'll see buildings in the map. Usually there's, in the bigger buildings, there's a basement, a main floor, and a second floor. In the basement, you'll find a hook ritual, uh, a few lockers, and at least one crate. On the main floor, not too much there, maybe some objects to hide behind. And on the top floor, if there's a second floor, you usually find the generator. That's going to be very difficult to get away from. Okay, so we're starting. It gives you about a 270 degree view in the beginning. Now there are three types of walk mode. That was another survivor, thank god. There is the crouch down walk mode, which is very slow. There's the regular walk. And there's the run. But if you run, it's going to leave what are called scratch marks, that the, a trail called scratch marks that the killer can see. Now, what I usually like to do in, as a survivor is I wait, look in that lower left corner, you will see the health status of everybody. And the number five means there are five generators left to get. What I like to do is wait until either someone is attacked, or as you can see in the mode in the lower left, then I'll start working on the generator if I find one. There are also what are called offerings, they're like these little skull, there it is, there's one. He's getting the, that one. It, all that does is give you bonus blood points, but the killer, the killer can put what's called a hex on that thing, and that'll notify the killer if you get anywhere near the thing. Now, we're going to go in here and look for the generator. You can hear the generator, it sounds like somebody's already working on it. Oh crap, there's the heartbeat! It. Sorry for cursing. <laughs> I'm hiding in the locker, I'm hearing the heartbeat, I'm waiting for the heartbeat to go away. It's not going away, so I'm gonna look outward to see if I can spot him. I cannot. So I'm guessing that one of the guys that escaped, because there were three of us here, I'm 
I'm going to take my chances, crawl over to the generator and start repairing it. When the generators start getting repaired, see that's what I mean, you gotta hit the space bar in that bar otherwise it'll blow up on you. And there isn't really a set number of circles that happen on the generator, it's just random. Once. And if you hear it steady while you're running, he's probably behind you. <laughs> now I'm running, and you can probably see the trail behind me, but I need to get away from him. <laughs> okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. It's probably gonna be a generator in this thing. Yes, no, maybe so. There it is. So, as soon as somebody starts working on a generator, the killer is notified that a generator is being repaired. Oh, come on! I was in that one. Ugh. Okay. Now this building might have a basement to it. Yeah, it does. Okay. So I'm gonna go down to the basement, check the crate. Hopefully nobody opened it yet. Nope. Now, in this crate, Will either be a map, a flashlight, a repair kit, or medical kit. Hopefully, medical kit. Because these guys are. Oh, flashlight. Crap. These guys are kinda sucky. None of the generators have been repaired, and two people are already injured. I'm not sure what that force on the fourth character what that symbol means. Once you get this repaired, there'll be a big bright light, and the engine will sound like a car engine warming. Oh, shit. Sorry, Chris again. <laughs> Difficult for me to hit the space bar and chat to you guys at the same time. Kinda of duh like that, so I guess yes, I'm sucking too. <laughs> and we got three people down. Great. Oh, it's a good thing I left. <laughs> now I'm going to try to find my people. Doesn't look like any of them have been put on the hook yet. Ooh! Somebody got the air horn generator. That's one of the um, achievements in here is you get the air horn generator and live to tell about it. And another generator. Now, I will shut up so I can concentrate on the circles. If you can land it on that bright white spot, you get bonus points. If you notice, I'm talking while I'm doing this again. Or <laughs> run, stupid! You're not running very fast, and he's after me. This is one of the. I would say better killers because he's got three people down. He did put he put none of them on a cross or on a hook. So this Bubba is probably still after me. I don't know where the heck you put these guys. I'm still looking for him. Can't find him anywhere. There's a killer behind me. Oh great! I had to go to the corner of that. <laughs> Run out. At least I didn't get hit, so I'm still got full run mode going. Oh, also, when you're running or walking, there are these crows that hang out on the rocks. And if you go by them when you're running or crawl or running or walking, they will fly up and signal to the killer that you're over there. 
but he has to be close enough to that area of the map to see the crows flying. We get the other two, oh. then we can go to the exit door, but that takes about 30 seconds. So, I hate when there are a lot of circles on this one. That's another thing. Survivors view the game in third person mode, killers view the game in first person mode. So I was able to just jump right over that mother <laughs> and he didn't see me. Now there are, I believe, seven generators in each map, but you only have to get five of them. That one's already done because of the bright light overhead and, as you can hear, it sounds like a car engine. When you hear it like that, that means you don't have to approach it. The only time you would have to approach it The only time you'd have to approach it is if you want to repair a low quality toolbox. I'm still hearing them behind me. What's going on? Is that a trap? Now you can heal him, the circles are going to happen on this too. I hope he's good at getting those circles. When this engine goes up, there are two exits we can choose from, but both exits need about 30 seconds to open the gate. So I usually try to go from one that's further away. We gotta get this one up and stop sticking by it. Plus the fact that it looked like he was stabbing that person. There's the exit, and don't see the other exit. And there's one crawling on all fours. So we could either try to save them or go for the exit. Exit's right there. I don't hear the heartbeat. Let's try to save this bugger.
Okay, now this takes about 30 seconds. If I was holding the toolbox, this would be a little bit faster, maybe about 20, 25 seconds. I am not going for that guy on the ground. Get me out of here, Charlie. <laughs> um, we're done, we made it. Okay, that's that. I uh, hope you liked the video. Oh, it'll show you how much, how many blood points you get. You can help, it'll, there'll be a spectate sign here, you can watch the rest of the game. Um, when you get three, when you get to the blood mark, you get a, a mark. Three marks will raise, or I should say lower the number. I saw one person with ten, but that you have to do continuously. If uh, you lose a game, then you lose one of the marks. And that's it. I don't do too many of these, but feel free to comment below or subscribe. I've only got like 40 subscribers. And that about do it. Thanks for watching. Bye.